You now tuned in to the hottest podcast in the world. The Stay Woke Podcast. Right here on the SonicBreakdown.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Woke Podcast presented by the SonicBreakdown.com. And you know this is D-Ray Brenton. So today's episode is going to be about specifically three albums that we determined rated. And the time period is going to be from December of 2016 till now. So any album that was released in that time period is up for game. And we were trying to stay away from, you know, the main ones like the Kendricks, the Drakes, if Travis Scott was going to be in there. You know, the ones that are really out there that, you know, everybody knows about that you don't have to necessarily uh find so these are kind of the the diamonds in the rough the gems that a lot of people don't know but the people that do know really appreciate it so that's kind of the setup for this podcast and we got we got our our, our boy trav in the building again who did the seven podcast with us about talib kwali and uh styles p so he's back i appreciate him coming back again uh man i'm glad to be back in the building man we love hip-hop man that's <laughs> that we Keep this on a platform and keep building and shedding light on certain projects and culture forward and keep the conversation on the table. Hip hop is universal. I'll kick this off and go with one of my three albums that I consider underrated. The album that I'm going to start with is I'm going to go with Freddie Gibbs, man. Because uh, that Freddie Gibbs, You Only Live Twice, Woo. that album, man. There were so many components in this album that really resonated with me and that really stuck with me. Um, one of the things was the religious theme that was in the cover as well as which is in the production. But it's not churchy or preachy. It's more of underlying tones that give that religious or that secular feeling, but still with the core of hip hop with, uh, you know, strong bass lines, heavy kicks, things of that nature. The other thing that I really did like about this album is the juxtaposition between the type of production versus his content and the way he chooses to write over the beats lyrically and his content. I think some people have a hard time with his content because it might be some content that you can't relate to. I believe on this particular project though, he, 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 he combined and he blended his, his raw aggressiveness and it was softened by the, the secular type of production, but you still can relate to it. Like I said, I, I'm not even on front. I haven't been through nowhere near the, the the shit that he's been through but he presents it in a way that even though you haven't been through those trials and tribulations you've been through some shit we've all been through some shit everybody's has their down times everybody has their hard times everybody has their difficult times that forces you to kind of either it will either make you or break you. the other thing about the that the freddie the the freddie gibbs album is that like i said the religious theme is palpable and his lyrics are blunt and aggressive and he's not shying away from it, but he's also not like cramming it down our throats. He's he's basically saying, you know, this is my story. This is how I feel. This is what got me to this point. That doesn't mean you have to go through this point. But maybe if you hear what I'm saying, you can avoid these pitfalls. You can avoid these downfalls. And I just I just really thought it was a real, really well done project. And uh, he has softer tones on there on uh, some of the later tracks. It just like I said, it's really well done. And. It was really well thought out. Did you get a chance to? Album. Did you get a chance to listen to that album? Oh, um, but that album, I didn't get into it, man. Um, and it's not because I slept on it or anything. I just didn't get around to listen to it. And I definitely, out of all his projects, just wanted to listen to this one because I knew that the content was going to be a little bit more than just talking about hustling and uh, you know, just talking about street stuff. I knew he was. I, I could just tell by the cover that he was going to get more. And death with you know with his soul and just connecting with his religion and, and you know the knowledge of self and all that. I knew that just by looking at the cover, man. And I kind of, but now I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna give it a listen now for sure. So uh, let's go to you. What what is uh the first one on your uh, top three underrated projects of uh, basically this year so far? You know, I think you know which one is gonna be mine. Man. <laughs> I'm glad with my first one is definitely definitely gonna be Prodigies. Um, the Hagelican, Hagelican dialectic, man, the Book of Revelations, man. I've been a, I've been a big fan of Prodigy for years, Mall Deep. Um, I met him a few times in person. Oh wow. Um, and I knew, uh, when I saw the, I knew that he was gonna come strong with this one. But, uh, see, the thing about Prodigy is that with, with this album, I don't know if everybody knew the hip hop history with with, with Mall Deep and, and Pete. Is that he's the one who brung 
the conversation to the table about the Illuminati. Before he was the first rapper to uh, mention um, Illuminati and bombs. It's been it's been sampled for years over. You know, his voice is the most sampled voice in hip hop. You do the research. He illuminated the idea of Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. He was the first one. He's. I mean, the conversation has been around for those that that are enlightened or awoken on certain things, but. As far as hip hop is concerned, he brought it to the table. Mm. You know, Illuminati, my mind, soul, and my body. <laughs> you know, he went all the way with it and broke it down. And the album cover's sick. Uh, I don't know if you see the album cover real, real deep. You got one side. It's, you know, it's a skeleton. Yeah, he has the. Um, I think it's called the Peruvian Man. Is the 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 pose of uh, that started with Leonardo to China, like getting the positions of the body, and he kind of flipped that image. And then he has, like you said, there's so much in it. But if that the the first image that you kind of see is that 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 image, and then if you look in the backgrounds, there's so many symbology um, throughout it. You're right. That the, I'm looking at the cover right now, and that the cover is is very deep. Super super deep. Projects on one this Queensbridge projects on one side, and the other side pyramids in Egypt. Mm-hmm. One hand has a the other hand has a gun. It's it's just crazy. It's a crazy it's a crazy crazy uh, album cover. And then you got the the nuclear bomb in the background going off right over the head. Yeah, there's a, there's a like you said, there's a lot going on. I've I, I've listened to the project one time. I, I do think it's a good project, but I haven't really dived into it to really get the nuances. But it is a very deep and complex album from from from, from my first impressions of it. Yeah. What, what it would, do you have a standout track for that album? The one that I listen to all the time the most is Hunger Hunger Pain. That's what him and this new kid in Cash Bills talk about his life and talk about, you know, talk about all the trials and tribulations he came up with, you know, going, going through, you know, how he was burnt out and he rose up from asses, you know what I'm saying? And just, just got back on and the beat, the beat and the production was so smooth and ill and the lyrics was deep. And that's the, that's the closing track on that album as well. The closing track is the one that, you know, people say is their favorite. Because that really tells me that the artist is really paying attention and make sure that they begin and close out the project right. I think that's important. I think that that can either that can make or break a project on on it being a real good project versus just being an okay project. Exactly. He, he closed he closed real nice with that one. Um, another another standout track for me is motherfucking USA. That's the, <laughs> that's the that's the other track, man. And uh, you, you already know, man. He's getting deep with politics, president. How they want to take weapons away, everything. Get third eye open. It's just, you know, making sure to tell people listening, you better wake up and keep that third eye sharp and on point. I love the album, man. I think, you know, of course it's going to get up. It's going to be an underrated album. I'm not going to hear much of it because the content and the lyrics of the project. He, he got, he got real deep on this. And this, this is the first, this is the, uh, a, the first release of a three part album. That's what I was going to ask you next is because I remember you telling me that there's, you know, this is part of a a complete, a, a bigger picture that he's seeing, a bigger uh, series. Can you like go into a little more detail about that um, for the for the people that don't know about it? Yeah, this this album, the, the um, Hygelican Dialectic, is a it's a three part album. The first one he released, that was in that was the copy, that was in January. This is this one we're talking about now. Mm-hmm. This is the Book of Revelations. See, it's always going to be Hegelic and Dialectic. All three parts is going to be named the same, but it's going to be a, each one is a book. So the Book of Revelations is out now. He's getting ready to drop the Book of Heron, and then the last book will be the Book of the Dead. So it's a three-part album. Oh, wow. And I think the next one is going to be about, you know, just growing up, and he's going to talk about the, 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 the stuff that we do to, to kind of like, you know, to do what's going on in the world. Okay. What, what's your next one up that bet? All right, the next one is I'm coming in with a, a a real young young artist, man. He's this is his first project. I also need to say that we do have a we have three projects, and then we have an honorable mention. And for me, this this one and the honorable mention one were I was I was debating if I'm gonna you know which one was it gonna be. And so just at the fact that I picked Jid as my second album, and and again, there's no order of you know. I'm not saying Freddie Gibbs is the best one out of these three. I'm just these are just the three. Um, right. But, but I picked Jid, the the Never Story, and mm. the reason why I picked that uh, for let me just give some background on Jid. He's a, a, a artist from Atlanta. He's signed to Dreamville, which is the J Cole record label. Right. You know the they have oh, I... they have Bass, they have Cause and Effect, 
they have a couple of a couple of artists on on his label that are are really really doing some nice things. With the reason why I picked this album is because it's similar to what we talked about last time in the seven episode of the podcast. If you haven't heard it, definitely check that out. It's worth listening to, as well as the Talib Kweli and Styles P album, the seven. So check that out. But similar to like I said, what we were talking about then is a lot of the newer artists kind of have all are sounding the same and are fitting in the same lane in the same box and this album sounds different than anything i've heard from from anybody um this year or the last couple of years it's it's very different but it still has some nostalgic essence to it um there are sections um that remind me of um, a tribe called quest there's there's sections that it just the, the little references that he has that um, for the younger generations that they'll get like Ed, Ed and Eddie, it wasn't a show that I watched, but I remember my little brother watching that TV show. Or it's a cartoon show. I think he was on Cartoon yeah. Network. Like I said, I didn't watch that show, but my brother did. So I have reference to it. And he has a track called Ed, Ed and Eddie. And the beat, the way it just all fits. And like, you can really tell that he really sat down and thought, how do I want each of these tracks to come out? How do I want these stories to play out? How do I want it to be executed? Um, it just real uh, a lot of thought was put into this album. Like I said, he has a different sound. His voice is very, very different. He, and and the man is lyrical. It's like I said, it was a very good debut album. I'm excited to see where he goes from here. The last track, Louder. If you're going to only listen to one song on this entire album, that would be the song that I would pick. And the I, 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 I'm almost 100% positive that J. Cole pr- produced that beat. And man, when I say that beat is that beat to me is infectious and it just it just want it, it's riding music. You can get in your car, put that track on and you, you go on to wherever you're going to go. <laughs> you you going to make it to wherever you're going to go because it's going to get it gives you that energy to get there. And he's snapping on that beat. He's he's giving he's just giving bars. Have have you heard that album yet? No, that's another one. See, with Dreamville, I know Boss, I know I, 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 Cos and Boss, those two. Those two I listen to. I got two cries, the white, right, and the other one, I forget the name of it. But I did hear it, and I know J. Cole's production. That two how to write, man. I, I fucks with that shit. I fucks with that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I already know. Yeah, the never ending story, like I said, Louder would be the one track that I picked. The track that really reminds me of A Tribe Called Quest with, it has a very light, light feel in the production. It has a light feel of, and it's called Somebody. And he's basically saying the the idea behind that track is like, we all need somebody, even no matter how independent, no matter how much you feel like you can do things on your own and how much, you know, you have, you can have that resiliency in yourself and that determination and ambition. At the end of the day, like we need other people. There's, we can't get everything we want accomplished by ourselves and understanding that, but also understanding at the same time that you have to, it has to be within you too. You can't rely all on somebody else. You know what I mean? So that's a good track. Uh, like I said, Ed, Ed and Eddie, never. It's a, it's a really good track. Uh, even the the very short kind of interlude track, um, A701, that features Black, it has a real nice feel, real nice production. To me, it sounds more like a Black song. If you have, uh, the and Black is the artist from Atlanta as well, and he has an album, uh, album called Problems. He's more R&B and soul. Um, more similar to kind of a Bryson Tiller trap soul type of type of feel on that on that production or on that album, but again, and even the cover on the Never Story uh, is is just it says a lot. It's, it gives you a kind of idea that this album kind of encompasses a lot of factors, a lot of different perspectives, and like I said, it, he just really put the time in and effort to to really come out with a very substantial track. It's twelve out or twelve tracks, and it's a good project, especially for his first. You just really impressed me for a first album. So I, I, and I know what it was. I know he delivered. I didn't hear it. But I'm, I'm pretty sure because all the J Cole was artists, but they they come. I remember the first one I heard from this this camp was Omen. Man, I heard Omen on a yeah. warm up on that. And man, I, I, all his artists, man, and you know they, they 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 all come from different walks of life, but they all have they all they all sort of passion of the art. They, and they tell their story in the production. They want you to feel the music. Yeah, that's what I like about all this. I mean, they want you to feel it. So let's let's go into your number two track or your number two oh, album, number, rather. Yeah, my number two. My number two one. Um, I don't know if Cat really wrote this dude. Um, he's been around for a minute. His name is Rock Marciano. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Rock, 
Luciano to vote Rose Bud's Revenge, man. Um, the, the, the production sounds like what, what, what Rock does his project. Some people might not feel the production because a lot of his a lot of his production sometimes he, cause he, he makes concept albums. You know, it sounds like concept albums, and it sounds like a lot of his production does sound like movie uh, score mm. beats. It gives like a movie score feel, but his rhymes, man, and and the greediness of it. He, he likes talk. He talks that slick talk. But he also keeps he's raw at the same time. It's hard to explain. Like he, he keeps it gutter, but he also talks that fly, that fly talk, that braggadocious talk. But he does it. He does it in a gutter way, you know. Mm. And the production always holds him down. Um, with, with his delivery, this album's dope, man. Um, I've been listening to rock for a long time. Uh, Buster Rhymes that brought him through years ago mm. on Flip Mode Squad, and he always Flip Mode's okay. the greatest. So yeah, he's been around since like Flip Mode Squad, but you know he's been like an underground cat. All, all, all the real spitters up here, um, they, they all they all deal with him, man. They they all try to make it a song. He was on Prodigy's uh album Albert Einstein with Alchemist. Um, he was on this dude. I don't know if you know this dude, really a kid. He's a lot of dark man's little brother from they be with the Wu Tang. He's another nice dude. I, but we'll get to him in another in another conversation. Um, but this album is really dope. And the lyrics are crazy, man. The beats, the beats are, uh, does stuff. They do sound like movie score tracks, but for me, I like that because it, it puts me in the zone. Where I can, you know, you know, I can. It's like paint the picture in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen to a pro- and rock always does that with all with all, with all his uh, projects, man. Alchemist does stuff with him. He does stuff with Core Mega. He's really big on the underground scene for New York hip hop. So, is there any standout features that are notable to you? Yeah, he does. He does have two features from from uh, this cat named Raw. Uh, Knowledge the the pirate, another dope dude, and another dude named Ra. They both are spitters, man. That raw gutter, you know. He kept it. He kept with his team. That's those are dudes that he's been rocking with for a minute. And they they are they're, they're nice just as well. Um, he he doesn't have any big features on this joint. Um, on his previous projects, he had features. You know what I mean? He just kind of kept, like with his homies, the cats that he rhymed with, which which is Knowledge the pirate and, and Raw. And both of them dudes are nice. Um, so he, he no, nah, not not this time. He ain't really go for the big features. I'll go to my I'll go to my third album. If unless you have anything else you want to say about the the Rock Marciano album. Nah, I just I just want people to check it out, man. I think it's dope. You know what I mean? It's some underground. What's the name of it again? But uh, Rock Marciano Rosebud's Revenge. I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna check that out. So I'll go to my third album of the underrated albums. We'll go over our honorable mentions after this third one. My third one is Odyssey, the iceberg. To be completely honest, I'll say about maybe August, September of last year is when I really first heard about Odyssey. I heard about him before, prior to that, but I never actually listened to his projects. In August of September of 2016, I started listening to his project and the first project I heard was The Good Fight. After I heard that album, I went back and looked at all his discography because that album resonated with me very profoundly um just to give a quick background on that album the the concept of that album was the good fight of basically doing what's right regardless of what everybody else says if you think doing you know xyz is the right thing to do and you have the whole world saying don't do it don't do it you gotta that's the good fight you you doing what you think is right under any circumstances he touches on that in several different levels in several different manners but on this album the Iceberg is a, another conceptual album. And for the listeners out there that, not, that aren't familiar with the Iceberg um, theory or Iceberg effect, it's basically the idea or the concept of whatever we know or whatever we see it usually comes into statistic analysis is the tip of the iceberg. That means that basically that whatever we see, there's a bigger picture under it that we can't see. And basically in this album, everything that he's touching on all these topics is he's basically saying like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. What I'm discussing and what I'm bringing to light now, there's so much more stuff under the surface level. And that's what I'm trying to get into. And the first track called Digging Deep really breaks that down. It's basically saying, fuck this surface level shit. Fuck this. It's just racism. Let's get into the depths of it. Let's really understand why it's happening how we can fix it, you know, really digging in deep, getting down and dirty, because with a lot of these social issues, with a lot of the sexism, racism, xenophobia, 
people tend to only want to stay on the surface level because when you get deep, it gets ugly, it gets dirty, and people don't want. And in some of those cases, you have to take in some self responsibility with that, and nobody wants to be blamed. That's why when we talk about racism in America, if you, in some circumstances, when you talk about it to white people, they go, "Well, I didn't do that." Well, when we're talking about racism, I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm saying that it happens. And the fact that you're getting defensive, that usually steers people away from the conversation because people will get defensive. We're not pointing the finger. We're just illuminating what is going on. And into some circumstances, if you feel defensive or or you're not actually doing anything to combat it, you do have to take some self-responsibility in that. Like if me and you are outside and you're my friend and I see you getting your ass whooped and I don't do nothing about it and you get mad at me, I got to take some some responsibility in that because I had the ability to help you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, that the, happens a lot. Exactly. And the fact that I didn't, that, that says something about me. And so that's what that kind of idea right. is, is circulated throughout this whole album uh, built by pictures. We only see snapshots of things, anything in the news. We see a snapshot of it, but you have to dive deeper to really understand the bigger picture. And so that you can't take these snapshots. You got to take these snapshots and put them all together and make a big ass collage so you can see the big picture. And so he breaks things down in that aspect. And so that's some of the things that I really enjoy about his albums in general is that he provides an interesting perspective and he also has social commentary. He's also talking about what's really going on in the world and he's not afraid or shy to really get into there. How many tracks? There's 12 tracks. The production is very, um, I want to say, jazz-centric. Uh, there's very a, a lot of jazz instruments, horns, keyboards, you know, very, very jazz-centered instruments, um, basses. Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, hip-hop bass. I'm talking about actually an upright bass. Okay. And that kind of appeals to my jazz sensibilities because of my uncle. He really fostered an interest and love for jazz. I don't love it as much as he does, don't get me wrong, but... I can appreciate it and I can appreciate the added qualities that he provided in this album. Some of the things I do want to bring up that uh, I think is important is he talks about, you know, like I said, social issues, racism, sexism, economic disparities. He talks about uh, gender inequality. There's a line in here that I've, I've used on a, another podcast that I haven't released yet that that deals with feminism. But he talks about there's a line in here where he goes, I get paid more than my sister just because I was born a mister. Basically saying that I have an, a, I have an, a, a privilege just because I'm a man. And him acknowledging that is important because that's what, as black culture, we say to white people, you have a privilege. Acknowledge that privilege and try to help other people that don't have that privilege to attain the level of success or um, opportunities that you have given. And he's bringing that up in tracks like this. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about this album. I really think it's very, very well done. And like I said, he spits. All three of yours, man. I think I need to hear all three of your, all three of your selections, man. Yeah, the same thing with yours. So actually, what's your third one? What's your what's your last one before we get into these honorable mentions? The third one I know, um, probably not going to Philly. I mean, I know me, so I kind of talked about it a couple of days ago. Um, but it's going to be your old Drew Pax. Yeah. Again, you know what I mean? Underground, raw, hip-hop. We always say from our region that we don't got no good MCs out here and it's over for the, the Northeast um, <laughs> region, hip hop. But then he got cats like this guy, you know what I mean, that's out here spitting. Um, the production, his production this time is a little off, but the lyrics and the delivery is there. This guy, you know, when he first came out, I remember when he first came out, man, on um, his first project, people, people thought it was Nas. <laughs> that's the crazy part. Because his first project did sound, it, 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 it did sound like Nas at first, like like somebody had took the voice and kind of took Nas's voice and slowed it down. Mm. And some of the stuff he was saying, he was kind of used to, you know, he was kind of sounding like Nas a little bit. But this guy's his own guy. He's from Brooklyn. He, he's, I think this dude is Russian or or, or, um, or Czech Republican or something like that. Mm. He's a Brooklyn dude, up in Brooklyn, on the block with, with, with the blacks from Puerto Rican. You know, that's how New York is, the melting pot. When I used to live out there, that's one thing I loved about uh, about New York City, man. You can live on a block. Yeah, that diversity. You know, with, with, with the Puerto Ricans, blacks, uh, you know, people from Bangladesh, all that, all on one block. Everybody kind of seems, has the same kind of aura and feel. Nobody's looking at each other like, oh, you that Belichick cackle. <laughs> you know, this dude. So, you know, 
And with this guy rhyming, man, um, if you don't if you don't see this dude, like you're not even gonna think that he's any other race. This is sound like a, a native New Yorker, black dude. This what he sound like, you know what I mean? Yeah, he does. Um, Cause I I never seen him, but I, I I listened to that album and I thought it was I thought it was I thought it was a brother. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He 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 has a swag about him. For me, what I'll say about in regards to this album is I would not discredit his lyrical abilities. Um, that's definitely clear throughout this album. The only thing for me that it just I, I, I couldn't get over is the production to me. The and and I do it's very boom bap New York rap, mm-hmm. but yeah, there's there's just I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the timing or just the type of sounds that they chose, but it's just like like you said, it's just a little off. It's just I just I just couldn't I just couldn't get into it. Like I Lyrically, I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, I feel what you're saying, and I just want to really get in there. But the, the production doesn't quite match. So for for me, but I can definitely see that I'm not definitely won't deny the man has talent. So I'm I'm definitely interested to see what he will do with his next project and see if maybe if he switches he up the production a little bit or anything like that. Hey, next production, man. He got to get back to the alchemist. So he does great with Static Selector, man. Mm. Whenever he gets with Static, he's on Static's last two projects, man. But he's dope. He's, he's an ill dude, man. He got that New York swag. He got that Brooklyn swag, man. He's keeping it raw. He, he is a little bit of a comedian, too. <laughs> with, 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 you know what I'm saying? So it's a dope project. And I, and I want to get that out there because I know a lot of people don't know about him. And I know he's an ill dude. The, the project's definitely worth checking out. And... I'm going to have to go back and look at his uh, prior discography before this album and see, like I said, lyrically, he's there. Yeah, he's definitely there lyrically, man. Um, that's why that's why I picked him for my third one. Um, because, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed it. Some of the beats were a little off mm-hmm. production, but, but the lyrics were there and, 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 and the stuff, the punchline, and the, wit, the wittiness was there. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I, was, I, was, I was juggling that at, for my last but you know what? I just, you know I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. <laughs> I know people know this dude, and he's ill. Um, and and you know, I just want to put it out there that this dude is, you know, he's a Russian cat, man. I mean, like, you know, there a lot of cats. You know, here Russian MCs, man. That's nice. And that shows you just the power of music. That it, the color of your skin doesn't matter, man. It's just you gotta, you gotta do it for the culture. You gotta do it because you love it. You gotta, you gotta do it because you want to. You gotta, and really have that hunger that. And if you have those, you have that drive, determination, and you have the skills, and you combine that together with hard work and determination, uh, hip hop is colorblind. Yeah. If you got the skills, you got the skills. If you don't, you don't. Absolutely. But so yeah, that that check that out if y'all can, if y'all want. That, and that, and I, that's my three, man. Okay. That's my three. I mean, that's a that's a solid that's a solid three. That's a that's a nice three. So actually, I'll let you go first with the, what's your what's your honorable mention. First one. Ali Vegas. Okay. Uh, the New King Part 2, man. This is another cat that's been around for a minute. This dude is like a fucking vampire, man. This guy <laughs> looks the same. You know, back in the 90s, we had this kind of uh, era where it would be a young MC to do to be like 17, 16, and spit so like this guy's like ahead of his time. He was one of those dudes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to give you a quick history of him. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a he was from Queens. And he's been around since 97, man. You know what I mean? His name is Ali Vegas. Um, he got drunk with, 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 uh, with AZ. Um, he was, you see the thing, the problem, the problem that happened with him was at the time he came out, it was not his second album. Mm. And it, it, it's another cat that a lot of people at that time was like, this dude is the second Nas. He had that whole, he, he didn't flow like Nas, but he had that flow. I mean, he had that flow like, like that. He was so young, this dude was 16 and 17. Mm. I think the first song that he came out with was called The Specialist. Um, so if you want to do some history on that, when you hear that song, man, you're going to be like, oh, word, yeah. And, yeah, this dude, yeah, he was, like, at that time, was like the people were, thinking, were saying he was the second coming of Nas. And he's been in the industry for a long time, but things kind of got, like, kind of got raw for him because uh, he was dealing with some of the same producers, he was doing the track masters and stuff, and he was saying that... uh. You know, Nas was all of them, he was on top at the time, and this dude was coming in. And at that time, I guess Nas, you know, this only time, second, second Nas out, he was still gonna do his thing. And he come this cat, he got the same producers and the same went raw, and disagreements happening and stuff. This dude got songs of rock him and everybody, man. Mm. And if you see this, if you think this dude was like 28 years old, this dude was pushing 40, man. You know what I mean? So, um, 
So, you know, check that out. It's called The King 2. The King 1 King. It's a mixtape. It's not really, a, it's a street album. Okay. You have, you have it for free and have it for purchase. So, I'll look for that. It's what you call street album that these guys are doing now. Um, it's a mixtape, but it's also kind of a street album because they do put it up for purchase. So, gotcha. it's a project. You know? And it's dope. This guy's still nice. He's still doing his thing. Um, that's that one. That's, that's that one. I got another one, but I'm going to let you get, get your choice and get the first one in. What's yours? All right. Well, my first one, and I feel like it shouldn't be on an honorable mention, and it shouldn't be even in this list of uh, three albums that are underrated because he has the the cachet, the notoriety, but I I don't hear it getting enough love to me. So, and that's gonna be Raekwon the Wild. Um, oh, oh, why did you do that, man? <laughs> I had to do it, bro. I had to do it, and that was that. This was the the album that I was debating between this and Jid, and I I gave it to Jid because Jid doesn't have the same notoriety that Raekwon does. Right. So I I just felt like Jid needed to be elevated a little bit, but Raekwon's album is that good, and it's not Man. getting the 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 push and the the pub that I I think it deserves. Like because it's that good of an album, so that's why I made it my honorable mention. If you haven't heard okay. us. Um, me and Trav have been raving about this album. We've been talking about how great it is. Again, when you listen to the seven, we talk about it there. Right. Just that it's it's a it's a really really well done album. The production, shit, just Marvin alone. It sounds like a sample, but it's not a sample, and that's how good Marvin. it is. It just like I said, I, that album that album is good. If you're a hip hop head that loves the golden age of hip hop, the nineties. That's gonna give you that feel, but I, again, it's still very modern and very contemporary in the sound, while still giving that nostalgic feel. It just and Raekwon does what Raekwon does, man. He's he's giving you that that purple tape shit. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that man. Um, I can touch on this one too. Yeah, go ahead. Man, that's definitely a great one to mention, man. Um, I thought it was phenomenal. I thought this album was phenomenal. I mean, all all the tracks on this joint, man. I, from the beginning to the end, I don't think it's not even the little even the little Wayne joint, and that's the one I thought I was going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I definitely, you know, no, I definitely feel you because when I first went, when I first listened to the project straight through, and I got to that track, I was, I, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, mm, I don't know, and then I was like, yeah, and then I was like, actually, no, that shit, that shit is cool. <laughs> huh? I was like, that shit is cool. cool. That, yeah, that 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 album. I mean, I love it, man. My fa- I think my favorite track was "Crown" on that, or "Crown of Thorns" on that one. Yeah, man, that's that. Production. That is a good album. That's a good track. Visit and I was another yeah. one. That it's, was it's just a good project, man. <laughs> it's a good project. Thing on, I mean, I think like this one. I, I already, I can tell you right now from the jump. If you, if you do a future podcast on 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 the best albums of, uh, of 2017, that's definitely on my list. And I don't care who comes out with anything. <laughs> That's gonna make my list. Like I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if Kendrick and J. Cole get together and make that album you want. <laughs> I'm still making my 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 favorite albums or best albums of 2017 list for sure. That's already foundated, man. That's concrete to me. And that's why I had a. That's exactly why I had to put it as an honorable mention, man. Because, like I said, it to me it feels wrong that I even have it to. I have to even put it on an honorable, honorable mention list of underrated albums. It's that, definitely underrated. Yeah, I so people, yeah, people sleeping on it. Yeah. You have any other honorable mentions? Uh, yeah, this, uh, I got I got one more. Okay, I'll, I'll give it one more. Um, my last joint is going to be uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this girl, young girl from Brooklyn, young MA, came out with her. Uh, yeah, last night. First story. Yeah. I haven't got to check that oh, out yet, but I'm I'm definitely gonna check that out today. Oh, so, lyrics raw. Uh, this girl is still in new generation. These young cats that hip hop is here. It's still in New York. It's still we still got talent out here. Young young talent, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that can spit and got the and got those bars, man. You know what I mean? She has bars, man. She's embarrassing a lot of cats out there. <laughs> She's embarrassing not just female MC. She's she's embarrassing the the dudes too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's, she's just embarrassing the dude. My comparison to her is kind of the the energy that she gives off is the energy that we got when Fifty Cent first dropped. Right, exactly. You know what? The funny thing is, that's my favorite MC. Inspired by Fifty Cent, so 
Uh, yeah, I didn't even know that, but I can definitely hear that same feel, that same energy. Is that's the energy that I get from her, and and we saw what Fifty did, man. But he, but he did it. He did his thing. Went through a lot of trials and tribulations. He got he got it right, man. And, you know, and I, and that's why she was going on with this girl. She lost her brother. Got killed for the streets. You know, he looked, he's from Brooklyn, man. You know, yeah. gang infested neighborhoods out there. They doing they out there doing anything in the street. They hustling. There's murders. You know, she 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 rose from all that bunch of people was with her, and she's doing her thing. Young. She understands that that you have to have uh, you got to take pride in your lyricism, man. Um. To be her age, to, to, to get that concept and coming through from the door from that, it's just that I I really appreciate that because you know, a lot of a, a lot of New York young New York cats, man, not 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 of now, but a couple of years ago, he was getting a lot of new artists coming from New York, and they just wanted to sound like whatever was popping at the time. Yeah, like, just ride that like, wave. You know, I give you a, a prime a prime example. This dude uh uh to make the panda song on. Oh. Uh... Wouldn't even know that. You think this dude is some Atlanta trap music cat? Kind of like Future, you know, he was another guy. Even, even, even a smarter dude, he's from Brooklyn too, you know, when I was locked up. But he, even his tone of music is kind of like, like Atlanta. This girl came to speak, New York. I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from New York, and this is how I'm coming. This is, this is what I'm, I, don't, I don't care what's popping, what's, what sound is working. I'm, I'm going to give you my, my element of where I'm from, and that's going to come through like that and represent the Brooklyn for the new generation. Yeah, she, she, had that, that me- she had that mentality of. Fuck making this for the radio. I'm gonna make the radio address to me. Exactly, and that's what and that's what happened when she came with the ooh song. Yep, that's right. What up? Because that shit blew yeah. up quick, and that's definitely not a track that you would you would you would necessarily hear on the radio if it didn't have the the push. Not not necessarily the push, but the energy behind it. Put it that way. Right. Um, you definitely want to hear that yeah. on the radio, but then you heard that everywhere because, like I said, she 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 pulled a boss move. She said. I'm not gonna make a song for the radio. I'm gonna make the radio fuck with my song. <laughs> like, you, you, you're gonna adapt to me. Word, and that, and that's the independent role, and that's, and that's the leader, the leadership role. When you come you as an artist, man, you gotta make a. You're not living in a time no more where you're gonna make records that you think the labels are gonna like, man. That's back in that's 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 back in day shit. Nobody's really trying, should be taking that approach. A lot of these cats are, but you got some cats that aren't. You know, another person, another person that did her did their thing like her was Nipsey Hussle. How he came through? He didn't yep. Fuck with him. You know what I mean? Like it's, I, I fucked with Nipsey Hussle. Hussle. I fucked with Nipsey Hussle. The other album that I'll put on the honorable mention, actually, yeah, I'm gonna do. It. This this is gonna be two, but I'll, I'll do them real quick. One is Lupe Fiasco, Drogo's Light. I think that was a, a nice project, and and I I heard some buzz in the beginning, but I haven't really heard much about it since. I thought that was a, a it was a nice project by Lupe. Song that I love, man. Name of that track, um, "Niggas Gonna Lose." Oh man, yeah, right. yes, yes, yes. I liked it, hey. and Word. I just like I like that feel that that uh, Lupe brought. It's a lighter feel, as like it's called Drogos Light. You know, it has a lighter feel, more upbeat, more. Again, he's is Lupe's being Lupe. He's still talking about real shit. Other honorable mention album that I'll I'll, I'll quickly put out is uh, John Wayne. The album is called Rap Album 2. And the reason why I wanted to put this on here is because the type of production that he gravitates to is he has a line in one of the songs. I don't remember the name of the song at this time, so apologize for that. But he references that basically that Dilla was a J Dilla, for those who don't know, um, was a inspirational person to him. And his production is really kind of what got him into rap and wanted him to he wanted to rap over those type of beats. And um, unfortunately for him. Uh, J. Dilla, uh, for, for uh, let me rephrase that. Unfortunately for all of us, with the passing of J. Dilla, we we, we lost that a uh, great producer in hip hop. Yeah, so 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 full. The type of production that uh, he has on this album is J. Dilla esque type of productions, and and the the, the cat is spit though. Um, again, I haven't heard enough of his body of work to to see if this is you know a flash in the pan or if this is something that he can maintain and and do on a consistent level. And there is one quality about this album, and I don't, I don't know what uh, about it. I, I haven't gone back to it. I've gone back to it, but I haven't gone back to it very, very frequently. Um, when I first heard it, I thought it was good. I thought it was it's worth mentioning because I think people should check it out, and that's why I'm bringing it up as an honorable mention. But it's definitely not going to be in that top three that I mentioned. It's not one of those, but it's something that's worth uh, at least taking a look at. I'm glad you're doing this now, man. 
I want to say thank you again, man, for for dropping those projects on me. You gave me some stuff I need to check out too, as well. So I'm gonna dive into those a little bit more. I definitely gotta listen to the Young Ma. I already have it on my on my phone and on my uh, computer. Thank you, man. Thank you for for having me again. And I'm, man, I, I'll come anytime, man. Anytime. I'm gonna take the take the whole song breakdown. Appreciate it. Won't podcast. This is dope, and I'm pushing it out there and get my people involved. You gotta get in tune with it, man. This is ill right here. So. Hold up. I want to say thank you to everybody that's been listening to us. Please, please leave a comment. Please leave a like. Let us know what you think. Let us know of your top three underrated albums so that, you know, there's going to be albums we don't know about that, you know, you can enlighten us about. Let us know, you know, the three albums you like, your honorable mentions, why you like it, things of that nature. Just leave all that in the comment section. Uh, Check out the sonicbreakdown.com for the latest reviews. We have the Joy Badass up. We have uh, uh, Jason Terrell wrote another um, review on uh, Kendrick. So, again, thank you all for listening to this Stay Woke podcast. We appreciate it. We out. We out.